You don't need fancy stuff like sliders or jips to get cinematic shots. Just get yourself a tripod if you're starting out with filmmaking and you'll see that by implementing certain techniques like composition, lighting, etc. that you can get those awesome, gorgeous shots. We're using the new Benro Iro 7 tripod here in this video and they actually come in two versions. You have the aluminum one and the carbon fiber one. This one right here is the carbon fiber tripod, which is super lightweight. And that is of course perfect to travel with. Now it also comes with tons of great features that you also have in those high-end professional tripods, such as, note just a few things here. Uh, the uh, drag system, it has a fluid head, so you can kind of change here the drag of that fluid pan here. Also the same for the tilt, so that you can have to put like a bit more pressure to it to make your pan and tilt movement. Uh, that way you can make a lot more controlled movements. Uh, we also have, this is pretty nice, we have got a counterbalance here on the side. So you can use this with light cameras, but also with a little bit stronger cameras. For example, I'm going to put the counterbalance off for a moment and now you'll see that the camera will just kind of fall forward. So this is not good. We have to enable that uh, counterbalance and now you'll see that the camera will actually pop back. Also not good. It's a little bit too much. This is for the more heavier camera. So I'm going to put this at level two and now you'll see that the camera will actually just stay at its current position, which is awesome. Now regarding the legs, it also comes with some nice features. We can actually bend these legs all the way up. So that's super versatile. We can also uh, remove this uh, middle leg right here. So that way we can go really low with these legs, but we can also keep that middle leg and that allows as well to go very high through that mid bar like this. So a very versatile tripod that is very promising and I'm going to take this out now to travel through the hills and the forest to make some awesome cinematic shots. So let's go guys. you have to pay attention to when uh, making still shots on a tripod is that you look for the architecture or in other words the lines in your shot. For example we've got this path right here as you can see it is like this one line in the middle of our shot. Also we've got these trees here on the left side which kind of breaks that as well. Now this Benro tripod here has actually got a very nice feature that kind of comes from those high-end professional tripods and with that I mean this ball hat right here and that allows you to kind of level your tripod very quickly like so. So you don't need to play around anymore with the legs like uh, closing them etc to kind of look for that right angle to get your camera leveled. Important as a filmmaker is that you can work fast and efficient. So here's a great tip that I can give you for that. Take your camera off the tripod before you are going to look for a correct camera angle. And now just go handheld and look for that angle that you want to go for. For example right here or maybe somewhere else. A low shot and I do like this a lot. So this is the correct position that I'm going to go for. I'm going to grab the tripod now and position it right here. Now this Benroy tripod here allows us to take off the middle leg and kind of fold these legs upwards like so and lock them into place. And that way we can go really low to the ground and still have that nice steady shot and all the benefits of a fluid head. And what I love about this shot here guys is that we again have that path that goes into the distance. Again that line in the middle and also we've got these trees here that also create these vertical lines again. So a nice composition and I also love the lighting at the moment. We've got the sunlight here on the right side and that also creates lines over the path. So we've got lots of lines here and nice composition and I'm going to do a small tilt movement over this to kind of emphasize how big these trees are here. And this ball hat here again allows us to work fast to level the camera. There we go. Now we can do this nice tilt movement. Now here's something pretty cool guys. We can actually use the leaves or this tree to play with the sun. So as we're panning or tilting uh, through these leaves, they will kind of see this flickering of the sun into the lens. Something definitely pretty cool that you can do with a tripod. Now if you're not getting enough flickering, maybe because there is not enough wind through the leaves, then what you can also do is just kind of lean back and forward on your two legs of the tripod and just like kind of look for that sunlight to peep through those leaves. 
Something else that works great are details in uh, nature. So that's why I'm standing very close to this tree right here. We just fall them down. And I'm getting working with those lines, like I said in the beginning. We've got this tree that is going into the distance. So I'm kind of doing this small tilt over it and also going to do like a small uh, focus pull as well because we've got all of these details. So let's do that guys. I'm going to tilt gently over this and kind of focus pull from the back over there to the front. Today is super hot, not the ideal day to make this video. It's like 34 degrees today and in Fahrenheit that's even more. In the beginning I was saying that how versatile this tripod is. And here's another great feature about this tripod that I love very much. For example, you can detach the head of this tripod. And this has tons of possibilities now. You can put this on a slider, you can put this on a jib, etc. But and here's a pretty cool thing. You can also actually detach one of the legs of this tripod. And this allows you to transform your tripod into a monopod. Now monopods are super great for working in tight spaces, uh, in crowded places, and it also allows you just to work super fast as you are only on a single leg. Now if you are familiar with our channel, you know that we love to be creative with film gear. And here's one trick that you can do with a monopod. You can just flip it upside down like this and now the camera is pulling itself down due to gravity. It kind of works now as a steady cam. Just hold the monopod with two fingers, very gentle, right here, and just start running around. I'm going to run here down the hill through this very small path, and you'll see that we kind of get that steady cam kind of motion. We're gonna put on the 300 millimeter lens here to film the windmills over there in the distance. Again, a great use of the tripod because at 300 millimeters, it's very hard to get a steady shot. So let's see how those windmills look in the distance. That's pretty gorgeous. And also this very nice bush here in the foreground that adds a lot more depth to the shot. And you can try to do a focus pull if you want uh, from that background to the bush, but it's not always that convenient because the smallest or the tiniest tremble is noticeable in your shot when you're on such a tele lens. And the wind is starting to come up. That's good because it's way too hot. Anyways, we're walking to a nice open space and we're going to do some pan and tilt movements over that space. So we've got this very wide open space here, guys. Very beautiful. And to show that open space to the audience, I'm going to do this pan movement over it as well. Now, very important here is that you pay attention to the rule of thirds. And that's actually that raster that you also see sometimes on your smartphone camera. And what you want to do is put the horizon on either the upper line of that raster, and that will make sure that the attention goes to the lake if something goes on in there, or you can also put the horizon on the bottom line of that raster or the rule of thirds, and that will pull the attention towards the sky. For example, there's a nice cloud up in the sky. Now currently we've got the sunlight over there, which means it functions as a front lighting. Now that has benefits such as a nice blue sky in the background, and we can also see those trees there in the reflection of the water. But if you want to get those sparkles in the water, then you have to make sure that the sunlight is on the back of this lake right here. Also, if you wait a little longer for that golden hour where the sun is setting down, then you also have that magic too. So I'm going to do the pan movement over this lake right now, and I'm going to make sure that I have my horizon here on the bottom line of the raster, because I want to pull attention to that nice, beautiful blue sky like this. And also put on the friction again here, like this. So I have to pull a bit more pressure to the pan movements so it can be a lot more smoother like this. And later, guys, we're going to come back as well to make a shot, the same shot of this when we had the sunlight on the back to capture the sparkles in the water. And then we are going to put the horizon on the top line of that raster. If you want to work fast, guys, then uh, use the middle leg right here to kind of extend that and look for the correct height that you want to work on. It's much faster and much more convenient than fumbling around with the legs to look for your correct height. Now, guys, what I'm doing here is actually a shot with this rock here, which is very close 
to the lens. And I'm also going to make sure that this rock here is in focus and the background out of focus. And while I'm going to do like this very gentle pan over this rock, you'll see that we're kind of getting this parallax effect and that just creates enormous depth. I'm also paying a lot of attention to the lighting, which is the sunlight in this case. It shines into the lens and also it creates this nice contrast over my foreground object, the rock right here. We're getting these nice shadows over it. So let's do a pan movement over this, guys. We have some nice depth with the parallax effect and the lighting. Now, if that sunlight here would have shined from the opposite side, so from the front side, which would just flat out light this rock and we wouldn't have that same depth that we're getting right now. Important as well is that you kind of increase the drag of your friction here of the pan so that you have to do a lot more effort to push the camera and therefore it will be a lot more smoother like that. Very nice. So that was it guys for this video and I hope you've also learned some new things about using a tripod for traveling. Pay attention to your composition, how the trees look and such and also the lighting that the sunlight is coming from the back. Usually that creates some nice contrast over your objects. Thank you guys so much for watching. To find out more about this tripod, the Benro Iro 7, you can find a link to it in the description below. Make sure to visit that. But most importantly, stay creative.